Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 9. And he said, Go and tell these people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and convert and be healed. All praises to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakar Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam, to the elect of the nation of Israel and Salakia. I should have read the, I should have gave all praises to Yahweh first, right? Salakia Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. But this is going to be a video, man, on um this particular guy, man, that's a known scoffer, man, against the Israelites. And he did two streams recently. And after he did the first one, within 24 hours, he ended up in hospital, right? And then he made the, another video. And then the title that he made of the video was, oh, them Hebrews got me by putting up prayers to their most high God, right? But then he was mocking when he watched the video, man. He was saying, oh, I only believe that this stuff works. I only believe that that kind of thing would work if you, if you, um, if you believe it's working, if you believe that this is the reason why this has happened to you because they prayed against you, then that's the only reason why it will really work. So really, he's kind of considered it in his mind, damn, maybe I need to watch my mouth. But he's still stiffened his neck more because he's an Israelite and he's stiffened his neck more to further not hear, man. But that's not even his fault, ultimately. It's your Howard that's blinded him. Yet he's going to receive destruction all the same because he's had many of years to get with the program and and understand like to understand to not scoff man not in no one even no one even telling him that he should that he sh that he should be um a teacher they're just saying that don't like there's a lot of Israelites that have heard it and didn't necessarily maybe might have not believed it at the time but because they ain't scoffed there's a chance for them to repent more than likely than somebody that was just scoffing and burning out burning out the things like, it's, it's crazy, man. Verse 11. Then said, I, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. So everyone's going to eventually realise, damn, that was the truth, right? Just like how a lot of these proud women in this world, man, when you get these, when you see these women and they become, they finally realise that they're attractive, which might be like around their mid-teens or whatever, they will finally realise that they that they're attractive to the opposite gender, so they they'll be attractive to the boys in their school or whatever, right? That's when their pride levels go up, man, and they become blind to wanting to hear anything what anybody else has got to say, right? But then there's a thing that people say within that kind of realm of talking called the wall, right? Which is where the woman starts to realise now, them same people that used to find her attractive for that was maybe what, fifteen years or whatever, from fit from fifteen to like thirty. They don't find her attractive no more because there's a whole new batch of people that used to be exactly like what she was, right? Now all of a sudden they want to try and listen. Now all of a sudden they come to the realization of what they was being told about. Don't don't be a hoe. Don't be proud. Don't be thinking that you just that the sun just shines out of your jacksy, right? Don't be thinking that you've just got it together because hum humbling a humbling moment is coming. And just the same way how that happens to women, these wicked women in this world. It's going to happen to these wicked women in this world concerning the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. And it's going to happen to these wicked men considering the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. People are going to realise, damn, we was actually told the truth. I ain't even got no excuse. They're going to realise that, man. Because it's only the elect of the nation of Israel that are going to receive the word, man. Everybody else is going to scoff. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. What then? Israel have not attained that which he seeker for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So a lot that guy's particular guy is blinded, man. He's in the hospital bed. He's literally filming from the hospital room, mocking. He's lying down in the hospital bed. Literally. I saw the video, man. He was literally lying down in the hospital bed, mocking the Lord still. Still mocking the Lord. So you, you get the judgment. You get a judgment telling you chill out, and then you're like, nah, I'm not chilling out. Yahweh has been more than merciful with that particular guy. So it makes sense that that guy is going to just receive the greatest judgment, man. And the greatest shame, too. It's going to be a shame in the kingdom 
for that guy and for people like that. When they when they realised that when when it mattered most, they were just spending all their time scoffing, man. They're going to be embarrassed, man. It's going to be an embarrassing thing to know that you scoffed against your whole heritage and the, and the whole saving of your people and that you was just really trying to keep your people in a, in a captivity. You, you wasn't part of the programme that was needed to get your people out of captivity. And that goes for me too, for me to think about that on myself too, man. And for everybody else out there should think about that for themselves. You don't want to be a scoffer against the Lord. It, it will be embarrassing in the kingdom. This is Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, which as such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And it's going to be embarrassing in the kingdom. And when that yearly celebration comes around, as a continual reminder of what position you was in, in the salvation, man. It's going to be a continual reminder of what was you doing when, when it went down. Was you a scoffer? And you're going to be embarrassed because you're going to be righteous in that time. You're going to be under the new covenant. You're going to be doing all the works that I want you to do at that point. But when it, when, when it went, when we think about the past, which we're in now, which is our present, you're going to be like, damn, I was wicked there. And it's going to always be a thing that you continually feel embarrassed about, man. It's going to always be a thing that you're going to be continually embarrassed about. And you're going to be a child, either a son or a daughter. You're going to be a descendant in the kingdom of one of the people that did make it. So you're going to be a descendant of one of the elect anyway. That's how your soul is going to come back. But it's going to be embarrassing, man. For you to know, man, I was scoffing. And when you have your particular lineage and that, that celebration, celebratory day comes round, you're going to be embarrassed because you're going to be like, well, you ain't, you ain't going to want to talk too much about, about, about what you, what your position was when that, when that came round, man. If your grandchildren are talking to you, what was you doing in that, on that day, granddad? You're going to be, you're going to, you might cry, man. You might cry. I burst out into tears, man. Remembering that you scoffed. Because at that particular point, you're not going to be a proud person then. You're going to be righteous at that point, man. You're going to be perfect in your ways. So it's going to make you sad, man, to realise that you was a scoffer. Or if you took the karagma, you're going to be crying, remembering every single year that you took the karagma, man. It's going to be embarrassing for you. You ain't going to be able to shake off the fact that you was a scoffer when it mattered the most. And then every time you see one of the elect in the kingdom, you're going to be embarrassed. It's not nothing that they're necessarily going to be putting shame on you. It's going to be that you're going to have to deal with that shame. You're going to have to know that you might have scoffed against that particular person that you see. You're going to know that, man. And it's going to be embarrassing, man. It's going to be embarrassing. It's going to be like you had a lottery. You bought, you, you had a dollar, right? And you could have bought a lottery ticket, Right? And you was told these are the winning numbers. These are the numbers that are going to win. And you was like, nah, forget that. I'm buying some potato chips. But now the potato chips is already gone. And you've seen everybody else that bought the that bought the lottery ticket with those winning numbers. And they've got that lot, they've got that jackpot now. But you've just got that scoffer's reward, man. That bag of chips or whatever. And it had a hole in the bottom. So there wasn't much chips in there. That's what you people are going to be embarrassed, man. And you can say, oh, whatever, this guy don't know what he's talking about. Who's he to tell me anything? You, that's fine. But who's, forget me, the Lord's someone to tell you something though. I'm not, you can write, you're right. I'm not nobody that I should be telling anybody anything. You can say that, then that's fine. I'm not, I'm not no more different than anybody else on the earth. That's right. I'm not no more different than any other Israelite. That's fine. But the Lord, Yahweh, is the one that told people things before we ever said anything. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and verse 17, for when men will not believe that thou art full of power, thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. So there's a time that's coming that's going to get ready to make our boldness manifest, and it's going to make shame fall upon all those people that were scoffers. It's going to make shame fall upon everyone that was a scoffer, man. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 
one. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labours. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. People are going to be embarrassed, man. They're going to be ashamed. They're going to be scared when they really see what the truth of the world is. Because right now, we believe that Yahweh Shai exists, man. We believe it. But there's not really much in this world that we haven't seen before. You see? Like, if we were to see a beautiful waterfall, we'd be amazed at seeing that waterfall for a while. We'd be like, wow, that's a pretty beautiful waterfall or whatever. If we were to go to some place out, out there, right? We'd be like, wow, that's pretty nice. Or if we were to see a, see a lion, we'd be like, wow, it's a lion. If we were to see a panther, we'd be like, oh, wow, it's a panther. But we know that these things exist already. We already know that a panther exists. You can open up a book. You can see a picture. You can open up the YouTube. You can you can see it. You can look on the TV. You can watch a movie. You can see these things exist. But the world has not seen these heavenly things. Nobody on this earth has seen these heavenly things. And even in the times past, when people used to see heavenly things all the time, then it became normal to them to see heavenly things. Right? It became normal for them to see Manna fall out of heaven. So there was like, oh, that's just manna falling out from heaven, man. Uh, we, we don't care. We want something else to eat. We've tasted that Egyptian leeks and cucumbers. We want some of that. We, we know what that tastes like too. They got used to seeing them things, man. They got used to seeing the heavenly things, the Jacob's well. They got used to, oh, this particular well, every now and again, that particular season, it produced the water gets, becomes like a healing, healing elixir. elixir. Right? So they got used to that. But this world right now is used to, I don't believe in nothing unless I see it. So Yahweh is going to show him, show himself by showing his son Yahweh Shai. And people are going to be terrified when they see it because they're going to see things that people have spoken of of old. But they're also going to see new things that Yahweh has never done before too. They're going to see the whole world become a fireball, man. And people might say, oh, nah, what are you talking about? What's my man? What's my man on? You know, I know some of you UK people be talking, man. What's my man on? My my man's lost it. You know, I know I know you you UK scoffing ass niggas talk, man. That think that you're just the ultimate goon, and you're not really, man. A lot of you UK people are gonna get judged too, man. A lot of you. Just throw that out there. Malachi chapter four and verse one: For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, say if you have of host, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The world's never seen that before. The world's never seen every single thing that you see just begin, begin to get melted. People ain't seen that. The flood was so scary and so destructive, right, in its nature, that Yahweh had to make a covenant with the whole earth, including animals. That he would never do that again. Just to pull it in perspective. The, I'll say it again man. The flood that Yahweh performed on the earth. Was so destructive in its nature. That Yahweh had to make a covenant with the world. And the proof of that covenant is the rainbow. Right. That he would never do that destruction on the earth again. That's how destructive that was man. That's how scary that was. That people still are talking about it now. And that happened thousands of years ago. More than 5,000 years ago that happened, man. And people still know about that. Every single culture has pretty much got their own version of that particular story, man. They've got their own versions of that story taking place. So these people, when the Howard does this, they're going to be scared from that too. But they think that they're going to be proud. They think these people were actually really actually are so proud that they actually believe that they could handle the Christianity way of talking about judgment. Which is burning in hell forever, but they can't had they couldn't handle that man. These people can't even handle not missing a meal. So how the hell would they be able to handle burning in hell forever, man? These people when they miss a meal, they go to the drive through at McDonald's and they say I'm starving, and then they dive through the window when there's no chicken nuggets or something. Or what do you mean there's no Big Macs? Run through run through the run through the window. What do you mean there's no more ketchups? Oh yo boss, give me two man. Just don't be stingy with it. You know that's what they do. But I'm supposed to believe that they could handle burning in hell forever. If that was even if it was even a thing that exists, by the way, which it don't. That hell doctrine is not real, man. The judgment is the judgments are gonna be captivity 
of the heathen and complete destruction and terror during the day of the Lord for everybody else until they repent, man. Through, and the same shall know it after death by pain for there is other Israelites, man. The judgment is that the heathen are going to serve the Israelites like they were always supposed to anyway. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And we want the heathen for our inheritance, man. Just like they want us for their inheritance right now. So they ain't got nothing to say. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anger of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. This was he who we were scoffing at, basically. We fools account his life madness and his entry without honour. They're going to know that they themselves are fools when it happens. They're going to be like, man, I was stupid, man. Because it's okay to not know people. It's not even going to be a thing of faith when these people see it, man. It's going to be a thing of man. Oh, now I see. Because faith is when you don't see it. It would be easy to believe in Yahweh Shai if he was just flying his chariot around the earth on a, on a, on a like fortnightly, saying, I'm going to come and save you Israelites one day. So, so you, better, you better get right. It would be easy to believe him then. But because he ain't doing that, People are like, nah, he don't exist. But when they see that mountain-sized chariot, which sounds crazy, it sounds, right? It does sound strange, yet we still believe it's going to happen all the same. So why, why is that? Why is that, man? Some people try and laugh at faith in, at faith in this world, but they have faith attached to everything that they're about anyway. They've got faith within their particular belief systems anyway, man. So I don't know why they mock faith. Verse 5, how is he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us and the light of righteousness rose not upon us. They're going to know we didn't know what was going on. We weird ourselves in a way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What does Proverbs 14 and 12 say? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. These people are going to know that the ways they were seeking seemed right to a man, seemed right to them. But the end of those ways was death. They're going to know that, man. And when they see what Yahweh does to America, they're going to be terrified, man. Look at how scared people was when, the, when that other thing happened there with the Twin Towers, man. Look at how scared people was. Look at how terrified people was, man. That shook up the whole earth. But when Yahweh gets rid of a whole country off the earth... And the country that's considered the greatest country on the earth right now, people are really going to be terrified, man. They're going to know that Yahweh did it because as that takes place, something else is going to take place because there's certain people in that land that Yahweh has got very high favour with, man, that have been singing his word, singing his name, praising him, showing faith to him, that he's going to show that he does what he says if somebody does what they say. Verse 8, what have pride profited us or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? And that's one of the reasons why these jakes get proud because they hear about the Hebrew Israelite thing and they say, well, this don't get money. So I don't care about that. Because if if it was a thing where Hebrew Israelites had temples, right? And they, and they had like, they you saw that they had a millionaire lifestyle and you saw that it came with women. People wouldn't have no need to scoff. They'd do it just because they're getting the women. They'd pretend that they believe in the Lord just so that they can get the benefits of the of the money and that they can get the women that would surely bring along with it. And if it came with a lot, whole bunch of praise too, and if loads of people believed in it, then they'd be down with it. But because there's not a lot of people that are down with it, people don't want to be the odd, people don't like being the odd one out, man. People like to try and be at the winner's table all the time, right? But if they really understood that this actually was the winner's table, then they would be down with this. They wouldn't be scoffing. Like, I don't understand how you can scoff about hearing that your people are the best people on the earth and it's got and it gives you an answer as to why your people went into the captivity that they went into and it gives your people an answer as to why the, the, the um, problems in their communities are in there. It literally gives you the answers to all of that. Nobody else fits that greater than a Negro, Latino and Native American. Yet people still don't want to believe that we're the Israelites, man. It's ridiculous. 
and there's much more I could have said in the video, man. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the lesson there. Like, fear of your hour is becoming very low, man, and that's why it's a sign that he's gonna do what he said he would do, man. When when faith starts getting getting too low, and fear starts getting too low, right? Apart from in the people that believe. Yahweh shows himself. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and verse 17. For when men will not believe that thou art full of power, thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. And he performed a small portion of that. Yahweh performed a small portion of that when he made that scoffer end up in a hospital bed, man. The same day that he was scoffing. Within 24 hours, that man ended up in a hospital bed and he even tried to mockingly say, oh, that must be because I was saying all of that. Which it was, because he was saying all of that. But I'm a lesson in the lesson there anyway. All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. Barsham Makakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. Shalom.